A bill passed by the Kansas legislature earlier this year allows the governor to unilaterally decide who he wants to serve as judges on the Kansas Court of Appeals, with his selection being confirmed by the state Senate. This week, Kansans get to see how the new system works in practice as Brownback picks his own advisor to fill a Court of Appeals seat. I'm honored to formally nominate Caleb Stiegel to the Kansas Court of Appeals. If confirmed, Caleb will be one of the most, if not the most, qualified person to go on the Kansas Court of Appeals over the past several decades. Brownback's selection of his chief legal counsel, Caleb Stegall, to the Court of Appeals was immediately uh, criticized by some legal groups and Democratic leaders who complained the Republican governor is packing the state courts with his political allies. But would you have thought the governor would have been a little more cautious in his first selection, given how contentious this issue has been, Steve Klasky? Yes. Uh, let's first off give our tip our hat to uh, Judge Stiegel here, because he does have impeccable credentials. Some of the top legal minds in Kansas, including uh, former Democratic Attorney General Steve Six, have come out and endorsed this pick, recommended him as saying this is a very talented jurist to be uh, in the weeks leading up to this pick. But yes, Brownback sort of bit off, uh, bit off a problem for himself here, picking someone, his chief legal advisor from his own staff. This is his first pick. He's going past the nonpartisan court plan that has been in place for so many years and has been used heavily in Missouri and in so many states around the country as a way to avoid just this issue of packing the court with seeming uh, folks who seem to be cronies of, of a governor in this case. So, yeah, he, he bit off a problem for himself in making the pick that he did, Nick. But he says he has huge credentials, though, Sam have. Well, he does, and uh, and I don't think that anybody is going to uh, to argue about that. But I will I, I would be interested, and this is where uh, I think that uh, the Brownback people could have done a little bit better, is we never saw a list, uh, even though uh, people have tried to get, of, of who uh, was being considered. Uh, before they, uh, before the announcement here last week, uh, WIBW back in July. Uh, reported that he was going to be the pick. So is there a list or was he the list? Uh, and the other thing to keep in mind, and even though his credentials seem to be fine, uh, he applied for an appeals court judge position before, uh, and the merit selection team, the five lawyers from the Bar Association, the four appointed by the governor, passed on him. We don't know why. We just know that he didn't come out of that process. So I would have thought that there would have been a little bit more caution moving forward because this is the first pick uh, of this brand new law. We're, we're picking judges at the appellate court uh, level in Kansas this way for the first time in over 50 years. Stacey. Well, we do know why he was passed over a year ago, and it was a Republican who sat on that committee, appointed by Brownback uh, himself, who wrote a letter to the governor saying he was probably the most qualified candidate on the list. But he's too political. We passed on him for that reason. His politics. Look, he's advocated for uh, restricting the abortion rights in Kansas. He was chief counsel uh, for one of the Koch brothers' uh, political action committees. Uh, there's no doubt that this was a political uh, appointment. Remember, too, he's the chief counsel for the governor. He's the, the governor's top attorney. So did the Brownback administration care that they were going to take any type of dings for this? Absolutely not, because this is a classic case of what the governor wanted, the ability and the power to stack the courts with conservatives, and this is just the first shot. We also know that he was also a, um, a critical of the Supreme Court's decision uh, relating to their decision over school funding and insisting that the legislature give more money to schools, Dave right, Helling. Right. He also, by the way, we should throw this in, worked with Phil Klein, the former attorney general uh, over the years. Uh, having said that, uh, governors appoint cronies to judgeships all the time. I mean, no matter what system you have, uh, it, is, uh, it, it, it is part of our process for governors of a particular party to support other members of their parties as they try to advance in the judiciary. You know, Lyndon Johnson appointed Abe Fortas or tried to get Abe Fortas on the bench. I mean, you know, buddies get appointed all the time. I don't think we should get too upset about that. And I would also say, particularly at the Court of Appeals level, because the decisions of a Court of Appeals are always uh, uh, under the jurisdiction ultimately of the Supreme Court, 
Had this been a Supreme Court appointment, I think we might have more reason to be concerned at this level. I, I'm not quite as upset as Steve. maybe my colleagues yeah, This is are. tricky for critics of Governor Brownback because the system that's now in place for the Court of Appeals is very much like the system in place when a president, in this case exactly right. Barack Obama, picks a judge for the U.S. Supreme Court. There's no list that comes out ahead of time. There's, he's free to pick anybody he wants, with, and the only caveat being the U.S. Senate has to endorse his pick, as needs to happen in this case, the Kansas State Senate has to sign off on Brownback's pick. Yeah, but the problem is here is that Brownback himself in, in that press conference as well as Stiegel say, look, this is proof that politics are out of this game now. And Brownback says, Fair this point. is for the first chance that people in Kansas are now going to get to have a voice in who gets appointed to the court. No, they're not. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, that's a charade that doesn't go on in the federal court system. We know that's completely political. Don't act like it's not in Kansas. Yeah, but nobody believes that, Stacey. Nobody believes that when Sam Brownback comes out and well, says this isn't political. Everybody well, knows it's yeah, political. Yeah, but we'll see because this so, is setting the groundwork for them, hopefully, to say, look look how successful these appointments are now. Now let's change the Constitution in Kansas and give the governor the right to appoint the Supreme Court. That's a good point. Two, two, right. very, two very quick points. First, uh, this changes the way we've done it in Kansas for 50 years, and it worked fine. Yeah. Next, even though the right. Kansas Senate has to approve this, there is not the background check that goes on with a federal judge that the Senate Judiciary Committee does. It just doesn't happen. Right so on. there is not that massive oversight that you get at a federal judgeship. Yeah. And this was a election issue and something we knew that Sam Brumbach was interested in doing even before he was elected governor.